It is so boiling. It is so boiling. Can't even breathe. It's just so boiling. It is just so boiling. Ooh. I can't deal. What am I supposed to do with the boil? Is my skin tone coming back? No, but I forgot to like blend the sunscreen. I did. I didn't forget. I was sad. So I just like put sunscreen on and did not blend it. So I've got a white cast. How's it in the name of Jesus? It's crime gay. I hope you're good. I hope you're PG. I hope you're Stella and in a neat little bunch. <sighs> Let me put some caveats out there. There will be a speech lag. Because it's boiling, boiling, you can see I'm sweating. Even though it's 1912 at night at night. I had put an ice pack on my face earlier, but it all melted down. So, uh, this is just the story of my life. I wish I had better recording conditions. So I have a speech lag. My captions are not always accurate. So look out for that. I'm not gonna take them out because I need them. I like them. I prefer them. I'm so peachy with them, yeah. Uh, uh. I'm in. Today's the last day of my fast. I apologize if you think I'm indecorous for that. It's the 26th of November, 2023. I made it the last day because it's a Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. My fast was supposed to end on Thursday, like Wednesday or Thursday, or so some arbitrary date. No, Friday? Tw no, Thursday, whatever. Look, the 23rd. It did not end then. I just wanted it to come into like Saturday or Sunday, so it's Sunday. Anyway, yeah, let's just get talking about whatever we will talk about in this heat of the night. It's boiling in your guys and in a most unfortunate way. Y'all, I was born in the wrongest country on the planet. I can't stand this land. I can't stand this land. Oh, take your land, do that. Cause I can't stand this land, yeah. It makes me feel like it's really the last days, even if it wasn't. I cannot stand this land. Mm. I take your little South Africa and all of its heat. I'm boiling. Gotcha. Mm, and there's like a speech lag now. Well, there's always been a speech lag in my life. That's just the story of my life. I can't stand this land, you guys. I don't like South Africa. If you're not feeling me for that, ah, well, whoops. That's how I feel. At this point, when South Africans think, I just say whoops. Yeah. Because I just don't care. I literally don't care. I don't know what's happening in these streets. Yeah. I wanna go home. I wanna go home. I wanna go home. I just wanna go home, yeah. Cause I was born in the wrong guest. A country in the world. I feel like it would have been better to have been born slightly up north, yeah. Anywhere else. Just not here. Not here, not here. Uh -huh. Sure. Africa would always been a thing for me. But nah, it's in South Africa. Ooh, I, I know. I don't like this place. I don't know what's up with this place. I don't know. What's the deal with this land? I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't want nothing to do with this country. I don't have a phone anymore. Do I? To record. I'm boiling, it's clear that this environment is boiling Cause I look at my phone while I'm boiling Speech leg Cause I don't have resources hey. 
<laughs> but it's okay, yeah. Because I'm 100% misplaced anyway. I was born in the wrong country. I was. I was born in the wrong country. I was. But is any Christian born right? Is any Christian born right? Won't any Christian feel uncomfortable anywhere they're at? Aye, but there's better countries to live in as a believer, yeah. Why did I have to be born here? Why did I have to be born here? A nation that's so condemned, why? Why did I have to be born here? It is not too late. It is not right. It is not right, yeah. That I was born here. It's entirely wrong, 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 wrong. Yeah, I had to be born here. How did that even happen? Oh, it could have gone anyway. Why I didn't my father do better and move somewhere else? Why? Was he not exiled yet yeah, to some other country? Lived there and raised his kids there. Why did he have to go and be an alcoholic that ruined everything? And so now I'm stranded here. I don't like this land. Mm. I don't like this land. Hey. I don't like South Africa. And I don't care that you won the world rugby. Take it. Take your rugby. Yeah. Take whatever else you sport. Take your GBV and your nasty knee. Just take it. I don't want it, but I'm here. They made me live on the moon. Oh, they made me live on the moon. Never mind living on the moon, but I was literally born in the wrong country. Yeah. Wrong land, wrong land, wrong land for somebody that would ultimately choose Christ. Yeah, I guess you can't choose where you're born. You can't choose your family. It's like being born in Iran and then you go love Christ. It is what it is. Hey, it is what it is. It's like being born in North Korea and then you go and you choose Christ. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. I will not ever be the first Christian on the earth born wrong. Hate my country like I hate not much else. I can't stand misogyny. I hate my country like I hate misogyny. I can't stand witchcraft. I hate my country like I hate witchcraft. I can't stand this country and I don't care what it has to write home about, yeah. I don't care what you got to write home about South Africa. You don't matter to me. You don't matter to me. You don't matter to me. You don't matter. Yeah. But I guess you don't care that you don't matter. That's the thing about being done with somebody that takes for granted that there's nothing you can do to flee. I was born in the wrong country. I was born in the wrong land, yeah. I met all the wrong people. I would have been better off living up north anywhere. Anywhere else would have been better than this. Anywhere else would have been greater than this. No matter the situation, I would have been better off in any other African nation. South Africa, no! Nah, not today. Mm -mm. I was born all wrong. Ah. I was born all wrong, yeah, yeah. I was supposed to be in Africa, that much is a fact. But not this crazy land, yeah. Just so pompous, arrogant, I guess that's what happens when you become Africa's most industrialized economy. I don't like this land because even the Christian persecution from out of here don't know a body see it, huh? The fact that this travesty that is my life is what it is And don't nobody see that it's a trend in the land And don't nobody realize 
that they are doing this to their own. South Africa has laid my soul waste, even though it claims to be Christian. I can't stand, I can't stand this land. The men, oh goodness, no, the men, oh, the men of this country. Where have you ever seen so much apathy? The men of this land, the women of this land, where have you ever seen so much jealousy? Where? <laughs> but I'm here, ain't I? Mm. I'm here, ain't I? I'm here, ain't I? I'm here and it is what it is, yeah. Stuck and stranded in this crazy land. It is what it is. Oh, Jesus, take us home, please. Remove us from this crazy, crazy place. It's getting even colder by the day. We have got to go away. And nothing is working out in this land. Evil men from other countries want to come live here. They want to come live here because this is a crazy man's town. If you want to get away with murder, come to South Africa. If you want a career as a politician that's not gonna care about your people, yeah. come to South Africa. Come. One come all, all of y'all. Come to this great, great country. Yeah. I set up base camp to what you want to do and trust that everybody's gonna let you do it. Hey, everybody does just what they want to do, yeah. Whatever is right in their own eyes, how they just do it all. There is no healing for the sick, cause everybody's stealing and nobody is healing. Everybody is stealing while nobody is healing. It's a crazy country. Take it. Take this land with your rugby cup. And take your country with everything you dripping in. Oh, take it. I don't want to be here anymore. Oh, but I'm not choice. Cause I'm here and I'm here. I don't got a choice, cause I'm here ain't I, hey, I have no choice, and because I am subjugated to the tyranny of living in a land where everybody does just exactly what they want to do, go on then, South Africa, go on, girl, go on, go on. Leave the Lord behind like he did not just get your behind out of apartheid. Go on, girl, do you with your mini skirt and your thong. Go on with your nakedness in public, acting like a prostitute, pretending that the Lord has never been your God. Go on, go on, go on. I'm bad man. Met your ancestral worship son. Sing me to so surreal. La loya. Oh, goodness. And those of you that don't bewitch you are just so incredibly ignorant of what's going on. How do you not know? Yeah. Christian country. Whatever. Whatever that even means. Yeah. Christian country schmuntry. Country schmuntry. Christian schmunchen. This land is barren like Amos 8 and 11. And the day is coming when the Lord God Almighty is gonna pour out a famine on the land. Not that of a thirst of water or of eating bread, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Africa, you are in Amos 8 and 11 land, but you don't even see it. Why? Because you can't even see that you've incarcerated your saints. Yeah, so it's a famine in the land, but you sitting around thinking it's plenty us. It's a famine in the land, yeah. But you be thinking that you eat in a whole load of bread, but it's nothing but dust. 
South Africa take your rugby with your president and your opposing parties that have no regard for the most high and they ally on the wrong stuff enemies when is the right time and allied on all the evil things how are you going to be allied as an entire country even though you're opposed to one another against israel i don't get it i was born in the wrong country ah i was born in a crack house for a nation it has taken the drugs of usata but they don't even know that that's what they've done you giving me a speech lag i'm not even sure if i'm gonna be able to save my music what a country ah uh, i was born in the wrong land but i'm here what to do as a lady born in a crazy country let me cover me because i'm realizing that i'm not fully covered yet. South Africa Now why aren't you doing like me and covering your nakedness because it's shameful uh, Why are you sitting around in the corner acting respectable when you're not? Why are you hanging around in a corner acting like you the dude even though you've rot? Why? Why do you think you're the man? Why do you think you're the lady? Why do you think of these things? How do you unite from a governmental level as a country against the place that made you Christian at all? I don't get it, Father. They keep forgetting their roots. They don't know their roots. They're like a child god that leaves home and starts disrespecting the parents that fed that kid to a point of being strong enough to run away from home and now they're so disrespectful oh i guess we gotta wait for that kid to come back all scrubby dubby dirty disheveled and a mess in order for that little child to realize that the parents apart from them they would be nowhere not even in a position to give a whole bunch of attitude a whole bunch of attitude is this silly little brat called south africa what's going on in these crazy streets i was born so wrong How's that even my life? Ow! Somebody tell me. How did I become an Iranian in South Africa? How is any true believer like a believer in the Middle East? Please. I need to understand. Uh, I need to understand. Uh. Lost uh, May 8. Except uh, I'm not being lost eight, eh? I don't know what's going on with this greasy country. I don't want it anymore. I haven't wanted it for a minute, but now I really don't want it. Yeah. Now I really don't want it now. I really, really, really don't want this country. I'm serious, God, this time I'm serious. But I've been serious all along. I've been saying I want to get out of here, but where to? I guess somewhere where it's a little bit better Their policies are not crazy The land is not obviously judged by holy God I don't want to be in the center of destruction I don't want to be where a bomb is gonna land I don't want to sit here, it's a ticking time bomb It's only a matter of time before you have been laying waste I don't want to live in a land that hates the land of God I, I don't want to live in a country that cannot stand and Israel I will not do it I'm begging the king I'm begging the Lord I'm begging Christ please send me anywhere even though it's hard everywhere but it's gotta be easier in a country that has not turned its entire behind on Israel I don't want to be here I don't want to be here I don't want to be opening a window and seeing a Palestinian flag in my neighbor's window. I don't want to do it. Uh-uh. I can take a divided land 
where some people are pro-Palestine. However, the government gotta be pro-Israel. If the government is anti-Israel, I'm sorry there's no hope for the land. It's only a matter of time before Christians too are persecuted in that country. It's only a matter of time before anti-Semitism is not given justice in this land. Because if the government can hate Israel, then it's only a matter of time before the Jews and Christians have a hard time. I've been telling you this country's judged i can take a silly little guy waving a palestinian flag on his own but i cannot take when my president is waving a palestinian flag for the country that i can't do ah no South Africa, I'm done with you. I want to be done, but that's the thing. I'm stuck in your shoddy little land, yeah. It lacks context. There's no historical understanding of even your own roots. I'm telling you right now that even the apartheid regime now will stand with Israel. You've missed the mark. This black government, I be afraid, be very afraid, be afraid of Cyril Ramaphosa. Be afraid, be very afraid, be afraid of Julius Malema. Be afraid of whatever under heaven is going on with now, Lady Pandemonium. Be afraid. South Africa, slippery pops is you, girl. It's famine now for you. You are a land that is about to face desolation, even though you think you're on the right side side of history because all all who would try to heave it away will surely be cut to pieces all all i said all who would try to heave it away will be surely cut into pieces i'm in the wrong land ah, i'm in the wrong land i'm in the wrong country if you don't be out just standing with the recep Taib Erwan, I don't want to be with you or anyone. I'm not trying to hang out in the land that God is going to heave away, heave away, heave away. I don't want to stay in a country that God is going to crush into pieces. I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. I have to go. If the rapture's not happening, I need to get out of this country. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm desperate to leave. Nothing good is coming to this land. It is judged in the worst way ever. It is so judged, it's so judged, it's so judged in the worst way ever. South Africa, it's over. Because you have turned your back officially against Israel. It's over. It's over. You cannot stand if you are trying to heave away the land of the king. Hi there, buddy. You don't even understand your own roots. Like, what are you doing? I'm sorry, South Africa. You're not a Muslim nation. What are you doing? Ah, the West has been very unfortunate in the sense that it's broken my heart. America has been a trickster. And so too has Europe done a silly thing. But in this world right now, both Western nations are standing with Israel. But South Africa, I'm sorry, girl. I'm done with you now. Mm -mm. You're facing judgment, a bleep on the radar. It's almost over for you, you don't even see it come in. I see the flood, I see the torrents, I see the tumult, I see the waves, I see them crashing, I see the tsunami. God, I don't want to be here when it hits. I gotta go. I said I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm in the wrong country. Yeah, I'm in the wrong country. Absolutely 100%. Been saying it though, but don't nobody believe me. Been saying it though, nobody thinks I am serious. Don't nobody see what crazy tsunami is coming to South Africa. Ah, optical illusion, you and the rock be, and then you take a stand against Israel. I'm sorry, that is an optical illusion. You are cursed. 
Oh, you are cursed as a country, it's so far. Hey, it's bad enough that you persecuted me, but now, 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 you've made it official that you don't want nothing to do with Israel. I'm done. I'm sorry, you chose Ishmael? <laughs> He's not the son of the promise. You chose Ishmael. I heard about it, Hagar. Hagar is not the girl. Yo, it's Sarah. You gotta get that. You cannot call yourself a Christian and stand with Hagar. No, uh-uh. Your daddy is Abraham and your mama is Sarah. If that's not the case, you're an illegitimate. If you gonna stand with Ishmael, yeah, forget it. It's over. If you gon' stand with Edom, uh, it's so far. Cause you gotta stand with Jacob. You cannot stand with Edom. And neither can you stand with Ishmael as a country. And then hope that one day you're gonna be fine. Nah. The waves are crashing on South Africa now. I'm sorry, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go from all these ignorant people standing with the Palestine. Hi there, buddy. Gotta go, gotta go. Gotta go somewhere. Where even if there's riots on the streets that are pro-Palestine, the government stands with Israel. Hmm. Eh, Hashem. I need to go somewhere else in Africa that's pro-Israel. Yeah, that's what's good. Or perhaps like in the West, like officially. I am prepared at this point to live in the West. Even though I couldn't stand them because they broke my heart so bad. I am prepared at this point to even give the US a chance. Because they have not stood against Israel. Not yet anyway, not so boldly. How on the heaven you gonna go and stand with Palestine? When Lord God Almighty calls Sarah to bed child the kid is Isaac not Ishmael so as a country if you gonna stand with Ishmael I'm sorry uh uh I'm done with you I we're finished Clar, done it's a gavel Trr, drop it on the ground judgment has been laid on South Africa and before it happens God make me lot Please extract me out of this crazy country before you rain on them a brutal storm. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see my countrymen drowning, but you po you called it on yourselves. You did. There is nothing left to do here with South Africa. Ain't nothing left. Ain't nothing left. It's over. It's only a matter of time before it's officially over, but it's over. It's over. It's only a matter of time before your crazy decisions catch up with you. It's only a little tiny little mighty mighty minute little bit of time. And I don't want to be here when that happens. I was born in the wrong land, yeah. I was born in Tehran, it looks like. I was born quite Lebanon. It looks like I'm chilling in Damascus right now. I am a member of Gaza. I am a person in Philistia, ancient. I am not in a Christian land. I belong to a country whose gods are the gods of the idols of this world. I am done with you. You have made your bed, now lie in it, South Africa. You made your bed, girl, now lie in it. As for me, don't expect me to lie in the bed that you made because that's an unequal scale. I made my choice. I chose the king that founded this democracy. I found the Lord that gave you all. Like, your, your hypocrisy is out of this world. He gave you a free country. He rescued you from racism. He's the one that was here not allowed when you were crying during apartheid. Jesus was the one that heard your prayers to get out to a point where upon being redeemed, your national anthem gave thanks to him. And then you stand with Allah. I'm sorry. We're done. Mm -mm. Thankfully, my content saved because I have the speech lag and it is what it is. Let's get into this conversation. I am concerned that I might have a speech lag again, so let me save this. I'm no longer singing now, I'm just talking. Okay, let's get straight to the point. Last night, I made a gruesome discovery. That's what it was, a gruesome discovery. It was like walking in the bush at night and happening upon a dead body that has been butchered cut into multiple pieces obviously a murder has occurred and somebody has decided to dump the body in the bush yeah 
It's a gruesome discovery. Even though it's three days old, the cadaver already stank. That's what's good. Yeah, but I nonetheless happened upon it. I came across a gruesome discovery three, not three days ago, last night, but like it's three days old, okay? I found out that my country, South Africa, which I had already kind of declared a no-brainer, okay? Mm -hmm. Look at how hot I am. I'm so sweaty. It's not even funny. Yeah, she's Alana, but let's just get to the point. There was a speech lag, and so far as you, my words are aligned. Sorry, you can hear my words, even though they're not aligned to my lips moving. All that's important is that you can hear me listen up okay did i give you guys caveats did i tell you i was wearing app makeup it doesn't matter whatever we're at this point now chatting okay yeah i found out that south africa my silly country i'm sorry like i don't want to be here i don't want to be here i feel like a black person in the days of apartheid that is desperately seeking a, like asylum to be exiled in another country because it's currently standing against my type of people It's only gonna ramp up. It's only gonna get worse like Hitler in Germany His little rhetoric was already manufactured when the dude was in jail. Yes, Hitler has been in jail before Okay, and he wrote some little book that did not even sell very well and in this little book He was speaking of a rhetoric against the Jews and nobody took him too seriously. He started a small little club of anti-semitic like uh, bozos and Initially it was not just anti-semitism, but anti other kinds of people I stand corrected as to what it is who it is that they were and that small little thing that started out in a corner looking like a little spark was unfortunately a spark in a very dry like wheat field a very dry grass field it eventually became a fire that sparked the genocide that was the holocaust that killed millions of jews so you need to be able to identify spot a hitler in jail writing a nefarious book that is going to one day decimate a people group commit mass genocide this country i would not be surprised if in the tribulation it is among one of the bloodiest nations when it comes to killing christians and jews in the tribulation i would not be surprised if south africa is one of the bloodiest countries i would not be surprised if it chops off more heads in all of africa like i wouldn't be surprised if it is so anti-christian and anti-semitic in the tribulation that there will be no asylum anywhere for anyone the tribulation is going to be bad for everybody do you understand like absolutely everybody's gonna be having a hard time but I do believe there are countries where they will, it'll be easier to hide it'll be easier to find a little bush and stay safe pretty much writing out the whole seven-year mark the whole seven-year haul without dying without passing away like yeah maybe not seven years because I do believe that there are, there's more than one rapture so midway mark rapture you will survive the three and a half years I believe South Africa is going to be among the most bloodiest countries in the tribulation and the reason I believe this is because South Africa is al allying with nations right now that are going to make sport out of the heads of Jews in the tribulation like the Queen and Alice in Wonderland off with their heads that uses the heads of these people as balls for bowling or balls for golf South Africans are going to be playing golf with the heads of Christians and Jews in the tribulation. I thoroughly believe that this country is going to be one of the bloodiest ones because of what it is already starting to do. Angwaz, I can't. I can't. If I was Yazi, last night all I could think about was I'm so grateful that I got saved because I don't know how it happened in this country. I don't know how in the world I became so fervent and so serious with Jesus in a country like this. I don't know how I'm not fluffy. I don't know how I'm not lukewarm. I don't know how I'm not apostate. I don't know how I have not gathered for myself some teachers to teach me what my itching ears want to hear. I don't know how I did not take heed of seducing spirits and doctrines of demons and depart from the faith. I don't know how I actually ran with the gospel when I finally started to study it because everybody else around me just does not take God seriously. Because if at all this country was what it is that it claims to be, allegedly, apparently, according to Statistics South Africa, Christianity in this land is the dominant religion in the uh, upwards of 70 to 80 percent of citizens of South Africa call themselves either Catholic or Christians while the, the, the rest are Muslims Hindus Jehovah's Witnesses Mormons etc other religions or atheists non-religions yeah you get my point I do not know how in a country that boasts that kind of lofty statistic as a Christian nation can not boot out a government that is causing your country to be cursed. I don't know how South Africa is not booting out. The ANC, why it is that members of the EFF are not just disbanding from the EFF. 
basically all of these parties in the country that are separated and at war at opposition to each other when the time is right but when the time is also wrong or right they are allied in one accord Julius Malema and Cyril Ramaphosa or the EFF and the ANC are generally at like the opposing parties do you understand but they're freaking allied on this particular matter and that for me is like as in anguas i can't i cannot like this country boasts 70 percent to 80 percent last time i checked as per stats sa of christians people who profess christ now of course out of 70 to 80 percent there are lukewarm people what i'm questioning is what is the true percentage of christians in this land i don't know all I know is that it cannot be that many because if there were that many that would not fly a nation that prays is a nation that gets hurt a nation that is consecrated to God is a nation that does not just allow itself to be cursed leaders would not be running the show r a mock rampant in a land that hates God that, that loves God in a fashion that hates God if South Africans were truly Christian praying on the ground down here we would not have evil leaders or even if they don't know God, even if they're immoral, they would nonetheless be influenced by the majority feeling or sentiment because they are running a country and so therefore change their minds in tandem with national, uh, what do you call this, uh, with, with national best interest, if you know what I mean. The, I think for instance in the case of Pharaoh, of Joseph, he was a pagan king but that was influenced by a godly man so if a country is godly or if a people on the ground are godly god will always give them favor in the sight of god and man he will make their enemies to live at peace with them so in the case of daniel in babylon he was given favor in the eyes of nebuchadnezzar he was given favor in the eyes of darius shadrach meshach and abednego were given favor in the eyes of nebuchadnezzar do you understand so if at all a people are truly godly kings can be influenced by them pharaoh what is this uh, god gave joseph favor in the eyes of pharaoh so if people are truly godly even if your king is a pagan even if your king is an unbeliever a member of the illuminati for crying out loud which what, what which many of our presidents tend to be members of secret societies they're freemasons etc even if they're freemasons just like pharaoh who in and of himself was always consulting with magicians and spiritual people sorcerers and magicians they can nonetheless be influenced by christians to therefore make a decision that's going to make christians live in peace in that land one minute the bible says if a man's ways are pleasing to the lord he will make even his enemies to live at peace with him okay right so if god has got like a whole bunch of pleasing men on the ground on the earth otherwise known as a christian country he will make even their nation which is at enmity with god to live at peace with them that's why joseph was given somewhat some kind of peace uh in 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 egypt remember how it is that potiphar gave him favor in potiphar's household until potiphar's wife pulled a stunt on the guy let me save this <sighs> mm, i'm always gonna be struggling with speech like anyway potiphar's wife gave him grief but not first before joseph gained a whole bunch of favor from potiphar so the man's ways was pleasing to the lord and so god made his ways uh, he made his enemies live at peace with him in prison joseph was given favor above all the prisoners and ended up being a little bit of a head prisoner or whatever it is that was going on over there because his ways were pleasing to the lord and so he made all of his enemies or all of his environment ensconce him with favor and then we of course know what happened with joseph ultimately in egypt where he became the prime minister of egypt an entire country that was an enmity with the hebrews lived at peace with joseph the exiled jews in babylon had favor with god and man in babylon above even the babylonians that's why they try to sabotage daniel look at esther who was a hebrew chick but that nonetheless passed for an arab and so she ended up marrying a persian king iranian king essentially and what did xerxes do he awarded favor to the people of esther because their ways were pleasing to god if a man's ways are pleasing to the lord he will make his enemies to live at peace with him xerxes awarded favor not so much to haman but to mordecai slash the hebrews 
Do you understand what I'm saying? So even if you as Christians are not in the majority, we never can be in the majority because the scriptures make it clear that we're going to be quite the violent minority uh, on earth because the road is narrow that leads to life and few people find it. He also says of the Hebrews when he called Abraham that I called you not from a people that were plenteous, but you're the smallest of all nations that his power might be shown. My power might be shown. My strength might be shown. So if at all God is going to choose such as one minute, if at all the Lord is going to choose a people for his own possession, uh, he then of course intends on that day to make sure that supernaturally the world around them makes it possible for them to thrive as a people. So the Lord creates peace somewhat uh, amidst his, uh, for his people that they might be able to live safely. So when you are standing with God and you are not dismembering yourself from him, when you are not making like Gomer and fleeing from your husband, but if you're staying home like the, pro the, the son who is not the prodigal, the Lord will make your enemies to live at peace with you. You're somehow going to be able to thrive in the ecosystem that you're at. Yeah. So if a country calls itself Christian, largely, um, the enemies of Christians in South Africa should be made to live at peace with them. Meaning our government, even if our president is a pagan that is a Freemason, that is irrelevant because that president would be like Nebuchadnezzar to Daniel. To He would be like Darius to Daniel. He would be like an, um, Pharaoh to to Abraham at some point, Pharaoh to Joseph at some point. Do you understand? He would be like Xerxes to who's this guy to Mordecai do you understand that that's what it is that God will do with a pagan king when he is head over Christians slash Jews or Jews let me know we're not the same thing replacement theology is not a thing but I'm trying to help you explain what happens when somebody is favored by God so a nation that calls itself Christian ought therefore have a great deal of favor from God on it meaning that its leaders ought be living at peace with them and there was a time when South African leadership, even though it was lost like no man's business, was living at peace with Christians. And that is increasingly getting segregated from reality. That is increasingly becoming a non-truth. Do you understand? And if at all that happens, like we should not be subjugated to the tyranny of ancestral worship, ancestors and what they're doing, or even any other religion we should still be the reigning voice because we are a christian country to a point where our national anthem can't say that enough is christian our national anthem is christian if a man's ways are pleasing to the lord he will make his way his, his enemies even to live at peace with him uh it is written of abraham right when god was busy calling him that he's going to make his descendants like the sea the sand uh, you know the sand at the sea or whatever if at all it could be counted if at all it could be numbered then so too would he able, be able to number his descendants and that any body that stands against him or any nation that curses him that curses abraham or that curses abraham's therefore what descendants will in and of themselves be cursed and any nation that curses that blesses abraham or slash Abraham's descendants will also be blessed. And that is a promise that was given from the very get-go from the beginning. And it is still applicable 100% today. Meaning that any nation that actively stands against Abraham, I dot E, Israel, and the descendants of Abraham, I dot E, the circumcised uh, Gentiles that are now grafted into the branch as it is written in Romans 11, they're cursed any like any nation without exception there is no escaping this curse so you can not try to eliminate the jews from the river to the sea palestine will be free you cannot at any turn like turn your head no matter how much times have changed against israel in favor of freaking philistia for crying out loud and not anticipate that your country is going to be chopped off. Let's think about the enemies of God from on old, for of Israel, which are therefore the enemies of God. It's the Philistines. It is the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Amalekites, the 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 the, the, the um, Cushites, the, the the Moabites, the yeah the Ites. Do you understand? These Philistines. Let's think about the Philistines for a minute, because what Gaza is and what the Palestinians are is basically ancient Philistia. Okay, it's ancient Philistia. If, if at all we're gonna be historically accurate, it's ancient Philistia and those people are Philistines. They're Philistines. 
Do you know who is the most famous Philistine in the Bible? Let's have a conversation. Come on. Somebody give me a show of hands over there. Being clever. How about you do that? Let's get some smarty pants that went to Sunday school out. Mm. Yeah, the most famous Philistine in the Bible is Goliath. Yeah, the guy that David slew, that oak. That's who the Philistines are, you guys. So you can understand, Kreshab, what South Africa is standing with. South Africa is standing with the descendants of Goliath. That's who South Africa is standing with. Let's think about who else were, were Philistines. What else the Philistines did? There's quite a lot that the Philistines did. But one of the most memorable stories in the Bible is that of Samson and Delilah. Yeah. Samson was quite the enemy being of god right of the philistines and they hated him because he was super strong they couldn't deal with him until they basically recruited a prostitute on him they brought delilah in and caused delilah to basically water down this this like uh, a hebrew man this godly well he was supposed to be godlier than that man and they subdued him through infiltration by a philistine Nian woman and then when Goliath not Goliath sorry but Samson when he passed away he pulled down pillars on the left and on the right of him in a building that he was tied in with all of his strength and it is written in God's word that in his death Samson killed more Philistines than he did when he was alive those are the Philistines those are those people in Gaza that you that's, that's South Africa is currently like <laughs> I gotta leave this country. Like, I have to leave. I'm sorry. Like, I gotta get out of South Africa. Like, I am so desperate to leave this country. If the rapture does not happen, I've gotta get out of South Africa because we are in trouble. Like, this country is about to have such massive calamity landing on it, like boulders from the sky, like Sodom and Gomorrah type fire and brimstone. That really and truly, if you are a true Christian, Bible believing living in south africa and you're not sure if the rapture is going to happen any minute now you're not hoping for the rapture because you you want to basically be safe just in case the rapture doesn't happen and that be what protects you from the inevitable fire and brimstone that is going to land let the angels of god that came to warn lot and his family to get out of sodom be the decisions that your government is making let the angels of god in this 2023 that we are in that came to warn lot and fam to get the step in out of Sodom and not look back. Be the governmental decisions that are being made in your land. Because they are telling you that fire and brimstone is about to land on your country. And if you don't get out without even looking back and so therefore being turned into a pillar of salt. Frankly, the diaspora at this point is safe. I know that Europe can be very xenophobic. And so too can America. However... When you are highly skilled, when you've got basically degrees from here to Timbuktu, they will take you any day. They love to poach talented Africans to boost their economy. You will be safe in Europe. And I, will, and I say Europe, not so much America. The reason why I say that is because Europe is the place where it's the revived Roman Empire. And so the Antichrist is going to come from there, meaning it cannot be destroyed until the very end. It cannot, Europe cannot be destroyed until the tribulation. America is, I believe, on its way out because it's no way to be found in bible prophecy but europe will stand all the way up until the tribulation ends because it has to house the man of lawlessness it has to house the man of lawlessness and so for those well ultimately the man of lawlessness will go and sit himself in israel in the holy place as the abomination that causes desolation but he will rise up from the revived roman empire europe has got a very strong role to play in the end of days meaning that in order to prepare yourself against inevitable devastation coming to your country you need to look at countries on the in the bible that will stand at least until the tribulation is over countries that will definitely stand all the way up until the tribulation is over and from what the bible displays europe largely most of the countries in europe will remain largely untouched um before the rapture they will be largely untouched before the rapture and uh, china believe it or not it will also remain largely untouched before the rapture but china is not uh what is this very kind to christians so as a christian you're not necessarily gonna have a very good time living in china but you are also not going to be subjugated to the tyranny of your country just being bombed out of nowhere you're not going to be subjugated to your country being wiped off the map like anticipating that it's gonna be just gone altogether countries that are safest right now all of them are literally in europe all of them 
and in Africa there are lots of also African countries but in Africa you have to be very very careful because there is a whole um what is this a Muslim drive in Africa where they are trying very strongly very richly and to a certain extent quite successfully to convert Africa to Islam but there are still some very strong Christian countries in Africa that you can flee to as a South African because as South I, I don't even I can't even tell you what they are so far I have not looked into them myself in Africa but I do know that South Africa it's not safe for anybody here this country is facing judgment in the worst way like it is so clear and it, to me it gives me goosebumps it gives me goosebumps to listen to South Africans and Javas Basi Pons are just throwing themselves, loitering themselves in the street, Nje, with comments, statements of this nature. And the body of Christ in the country is not gathering to pray that they might gain favor in the sight of God that would change the heart of Abimelech. That, not Abimelech, sorry, but of Pharaoh. That would change the heart of Nebuchadnezzar. It was the piety of Shadrach, Nesh, Meshach, and Abednego that changed the heart of Nebuchadnezzar towards those Hebrew boys. It was the favor of Darius over Daniel that changed his heart towards Daniel's God and his desire to worship continuously. His God, it was the favor of Pharaoh that changed his heart about the plan for Egypt and also about Joseph staying in prison. So if at all your kings are not made to change their minds about a dumb decision, judgment will inevitably come. And so the strategy going forward for believers of Christ would not so much be finding favor in the sight of kings but exile, frankly seeking asylum like leaving extraction evacuation flight south africa is currently looking at flight more even than fight because it is ungodly the nation is not convincing its leadership to not hurt themselves in this way for years in this hole that i've been living in in south africa i have been listening to the blasphemous remarks of naledi pandor Cyril ramaphosa and anybody else at all else that can uh, make a statement about israel and about the state of the current nation that South Africa in its current state and they have all just hurled blasphemies against God blasphemies do you understand they have been a most blasphemous caucus of politicians and South African Christians have not prospered to stay their hands from their blasphemy the Lord has not seen it fit to make you as South Africans to live at peace with your leaders meaning you are not his and when there is only one or two or three or five christians that god regards with favor in a land that is otherwise desolate with sin he will just extract those five twenty people and then bomb all of y'all he will destroy all of y'all that's why South Africa, the churches of South Africa, they are like a little circus, a, a, a children's game. Black man, badile, batia matini, gom gom, banana, you know, eggy, scotch, whatever. It's games. Because there is no way that you are truly of God, South Africa. It's absolutely impossible that you are truly of God. And yet, God is not on your behalf flipping the hearts of your leaders why is god not even uprooting anc the anc should have been uprooted by now if at all this nation was truly godly because it has been given enough time to repent and has not the anc has been given a chance to see that they messed up and they have not repented they have not done a better thing they have not come out from their slumber and so they need to be uprooted and the fact that you keep on going back to vote for them over and over and over and over again evidences that as a nation you are lost you are not able to turn the hearts of the land away from ANC vote do you understand what I'm saying you're not able to prosper to turn the hearts of black South Africans away from their default setting to vote for ANC every new election because it's all they can vote for you've given them a, a, a wicked nefarious alternative in the form of Julius Malema who is a communist or a socialist the socialism of which is entirely unbiblical he might as well be a member of Black Lives Matter. The guy doesn't even like white people. He keeps on saying, kill the boy, kill the farmer. That's the other alternative for blacks to vote for. And insofar as you guys keep on voting based on your race, based on your black skin, you are not led by God. You can't possibly be led by God. If the only thing inspiring your vote for a government is uh, the skin color of the leading, uh, of the leader, that the likely president, if that's all that's causing you to vote, you are not a, a land that is any minute now about to be freed from your, what's the word that I'm looking for? Your futility. Like whatever it is that you keep on getting subjugated to the tyranny of, you're going to keep on enduring it. You're going to keep on enduring Ama Power Cuts. I don't even know why. So many companies are raising up from the ground, starting um, deals 
for solar power when the country should just fix its electrical infrastructure already because the solar panels are unfortunately not affordable for most people who need electricity they're not affordable like there is a complex that is being built a, a new uh, development uh, not far from where it is that i stay and every last house in that complex has solar panels so now it's a real estate satisfier it's it's a real house boosting sales booster to build a house with solar panels from scratch it can cause that house to retail for a lot more than a regular home that doesn't have solar panels the fact that south africans have had to come up with that strategy in real estate is the is evidencing how judged we are as a country the fact that south africans are planning for a future without electricity and are coming up with other alternative resources to get power other than what it is that the government ought provide is evidence of settling it's evidence of settling if only you uprooted one party we would likely be on our way back to a powered nation within five to ten years maximum but with the anc we're going to still continue to get these power cuts with this level of corruption in the country it will continue to happen to a point where now real estate companies are or developers are busy building homes that have solar panels because they don't expect the government to do better that's a country that god has not basically made its alleged christians that live in it to live at peace with uh with with leadership with their enemies with everybody around the country's judged and the evidences are already stuck everywhere the um, inequality in the country the nation that is south africa is the most unequal in the world like literally we come number one in that abysmal statistic we are the most unequal economy in the world the most unequal country in the world well with the solar energy drive to get basically electricity 24 hours a day to people who can afford it is going to create an even bigger groove in that it is going to create an even bigger divide a bigger gulf will be caused of inequality in the country because it will only be those that are able to afford solar panels that are going to have businesses that have got 24 hour electricity and so therefore the economic boost oomph and impetus required to thrive a business if at all you are providing electricity through solar power to those who can afford it but everybody else will just have to lean on this whole escom issue it basically puts business it, it creates an unfair advantage in, in the business arena of those people that cannot afford solar panels and so the already poor are going to be even poorer the pie of the wealth of the country is going to be even more largely distributed to the already wealthy so it's going to create an even bigger income disparity between the poor and the rich and create less and less opportunity to get out of the grain of poverty by the poor because you know it's 2023 who in the world survives a business without electricity so it is entirely settling do you understand to pride yourself in having solar panels when the country should just be fed electricity and if people are paying their power bills let them have electricity but nobody is actually succeeding to boot the anc out of power why are they not succeeding because they're not godly it is written in god's word that the heart of the king is like a stream of water in the hands of god so if at all the lord favors you as a christian population even though you've got a pagan king he will stream the heart of that king in your favor he will cause your Cyril Ramaphosa to do better by the country at large so that you can live at peace in your land so that there might be what is this milk and honey flowing in your land do you understand the Lord will bless any land that has people in it that honor him still that worship him South Africa should be flowing with milk and honey given that it claims to boast it boast a 70 to 80 percent population of Christians so if at all we are maintained in power cuts and the income disparity is about to engulf even more people whole that are poor given that we are now uh, like officially so anti-israel that we have cut diplomatic ties with them you can forget as a nation of christians that you're going to be safe for much longer i suppose all of this persecution of my person commenced uh, so early against me and me only that y'all underestimate just how like horrifically what has happened to me will also happen to you this comprehensive disregard of a person purely because they lead they, they allege and latch on to jesus christ yeah to mistreat a person this badly this is the kind of mistreatment that you would find in iran do you understand what it is that i'm enduring the second class citizenship that i now endure my disenfranchised state that is the kind of stuff that happens to christian converts you know from islam in the middle east 
and yet I'm enduring it. But because it is so anomalous and so sparsely scattered all over the show, few and far between it is, you cannot find a pattern in the graph, and so therefore you don't think it's a trend. It starts small, that's the thing, and then it burgeons. It's like Hitler, that little horn, that like uh, typology of an antichrist. He started out little, writing a nefarious book in prison that ultimately became a whole basic like Jewish apocalypse. Neuron. It resulted in a violent genocide against a said people. So I am one scattered little graph in this one scattered little um point in this Cartesian plane. And because you are yet to see a trend of what is going on with me, you think I'm an like I said, an outlier, an anomaly, right? Something that you should not pay too much attention to because it is rare and highly unlikely to occur again. You have given the probability of my occurrence, the circumstance that I am dwelling in, some abysmal figure. And so for those reasons you imagine me feasibly ignorable, except here it is that your whole government is voting in a way that makes it clear that what little dart or drawing I am, what little point I am on this Cartesian plane, there are about to be a lot more dots bunched up near my particular plot on this like graph. Do you understand? Therefore creating a trend and the individuals in question that are in question that are going to be in this graph are all going to be similarly disenfranchised as I am and they will all have one thing in common. They will either be Jews or Christians. Properly your little Hitler is sitting in the union buildings parliament like your little hitler is chilling in the limo hotel year on year like your hitler is somehow strangely able to garner for himself a following despite in 2023 saying kill the bullet boo kill the farmer the alternative for black people is julius malem and that socialist racist is getting taken seriously by black people who do not care about their country clearly you don't you cannot for the life of you care about your country when you're still standing for somebody who wants a reverse apartheid. I mean, for crying out loud. The, um, the claims that Julius Malema and Nusiru Ramaphosa are making is that Israel is an apartheid state. And the same guy in all of his hypocrisy that's claiming that Israel is an apartheid state is actually trying to create some kind of a reverse apartheid in South Africa where blacks have got favor above whites. That's Julius Malem, but he's out here, like disbanding the veracity of Israel belonging to God's people altogether. He is a hypocrite. He is the alternative for black people. Some dude that's going to create the reverse of Group Areas Act. It's going to be some upside down little shoddy version. And black people are still standing with that. Now you want to be the ones that are pristine, propped up in opulence at the expense of white folk for real? Yes, like it. Uh, when apartheid is rolling around in the streets of any country, we get sanctioned. Like we can't do Olympics. We get bank accounts of our business moguls frozen. That's what happens. So there is no doing a reverse apartheid and yet these blacks are foolishly following after Julius Malema who has got such a violent political rhetoric that he should not be allowed to run. He shouldn't be allowed to run or at least he shouldn't be getting taken as seriously as he's currently getting taken seriously. And he is the alternative allegedly to I don't know why you don't see that your country's judged. But then again, black people, you are defeatist, aren't you? Yeah. Look at what you're doing to me. You've laid me waste. You've, you've suffered me to endure all of this random rubbish precisely because of the fact that you have been made blind. Your eyes, even though you see, you don't see. Your ears, even though you hear, you don't hear. You have been made a daft land and God is going to take your best among you and move them away. So really and truly, if you are hyper skilled, if you've got like 20,000 degrees and like 20,000 years of experience, like apply for a work permit to go and uh, boost the economy of some European country because you are highly unlikely going to get caught by a bomb over there. You might have to maintain your religion inside your flat and not, you know, comment on how much you hate abortion so publicly you might even get your youtube channel uh what is this uh, severely monitored by their little communications law that they're coming up with but it's not going to be it's going to take a very long time before the whole country is mowed to the ground before the whole economy is decimated if anything christ's return is what decimates that that ecosystem and not only that uh you you still do get to kind of cry and complain about mistreatment and then get hurt you see, the issue is about raising a case from the ground and go in a court with it and actually get hurt. Like, actually have a case. And if at all your case is unjust, actually have some people in America reporting on how unjust the case is. In South Africa, things get like slipped under the carpet. People are made to disappear. People are made to just like entirely be eradicated from the face of the earth 
and there is no commentary in the US about this incendiary activity in South Africa. There is no commentary in Europe. What's important about injustice is having somebody highlight that it is unjust. That's what's important. In South Africa, injustice just gets swept into the carpet and so the unjustly treated merely disappear. They literally just poof into the sky like vapor, just disappear. There is nobody complaining. In Europe, when Christians get incarcerated for being street pe preachers, America's out here talking about it and it is spoken about on Fox News and everybody's out here rioting. They are busy trending it on Twitter as an abomination. When a Christian gets their, uh, their human rights violated and they lose a case in court, America's taking that up and they're talking about it. And the same thing is true in the US. When a judgment, a case is, is basically cast in stone where a judgment is passed, a sentence is passed that is uh, ridiculous or something. Somebody out here commenting about it. What's important in these last days, there will be a lot of injustice. Bitter will be called sweet and sweet will be called bitter. What's important important however is having anyone at all talk about the, the 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 irresponsible activity of calling bittersweet that's what's important having somebody notice that something's wrong when you're sitting in a country where you're just gonna get swept under the rug even though you're completely innocent you're not safe and Christians you are about to be violently persecuted by this country and no one will care because it will continue to be proliferated as Christians as, as uh, sorry South Africans it will continue to be proliferated as a nation that we are not a persecuting country I don't know why just like Nigeria China North Korea South Africa is not up there as one of the most persecuting countries of Christians in the world but that's the thing you can never ever make that list unless somebody's actually talking about the cases on the ground of Christian persecution I am a case on the ground and look at how badly shadow banned I am South Africa made a decision to basically boot me off TikTok so I cannot speak the country's indiscretions against believers in Christ, likely also Jews, are mum. They are hush hush under carpets. They have been swept under the, the rug. Meaning that if at all you are a Christian in the country and you still have some kind of a semblance of a normal life and you can indeed move to a place where your voice will be heard even if you are unjustly treated, you will nonetheless, when you're screaming, get heard, move there. There is no place where it is safe for Christians, but there are places where it's better because at least you are gonna have concert with people who agree that you're right there. In South Africa, uzo zebwa, do you understand? You will get ignored until you pass away. That's what I am facing. That is the travesty that I am facing right now. That's the devastation that I am facing. I am facing comprehensive disregard of my person until I die. And I'm fighting for that life. And if I died, unfortunately, ain't nobody ever gonna hear about it. That's why I came out to South Africa because my voice will finally be heard if I leave the country. I will finally be given some kind of an ear. Even if I don't get justice, I will nonetheless have somebody say, this is unjust. But in South Africa, tuli lenje fella, crickets. Let's move to the next part.